In 1922, a 23-year-old boy was standing in front of Cecil Hotel in Shimla. He wanted to work as a clerk in that hotel, but due to his appearance, the hotel guard didn't even allow him to enter. At that time, nobody would have dreamed of this boy not only becoming the owner of this hotel in the future, but building one of the most luxurious hotel chains of India. This is the story of the Oberoi Hotels. In the year 1898, in the undivided India's Punjab province was born Mohan Singh Oberoi. He was just six months old when he lost his father in an epidemic. In spite of that, Mohan's mother ensured that he received education. At the age of 16, he went to Lahore for his college education and joined DAV College. And there, two important things took place in his life. First, he learned to communicate in English and second, he got a part-time job in a shoe factory. With time, he developed a deep understanding of design and production process. He became a supervisor from a normal worker and then rose to a full-time managerial position. Rising from poverty, Mohan felt that his life has settled now. But then the story takes a twist. Protests started in entire India against the Rollout Act implemented by the British, which negatively impacted many businesses. After struggling for a few years, the shoe factory also shut down in 1922 and Mohan became unemployed overnight. Coincidentally, during these times, Mohan got married to a beautiful girl named Ishran and was the father of a newborn girl. Hence, Mohan was desperately looking for work. At that time, he decided to relocate to a city which was to transform his whole life. And that city was Shimla. Shimla used to be the capital of the British India during summers due to which high-ranking officials and tourists used to frequent there. Hence, it was a perfect city to search for work. But unfortunately, Mohan got rejected in his very first job interview in Shimla. He was walking in disappointment when he found himself in front of a magnificent building. He had arrived at the Cecil Hotel, which is the most popular hotel in Shimla. He saw the high-profile guests and top-notch staff there, after which he was determined not to leave Shimla till he got a job in Cecil. He took a deep breath and began to enter with confidence, but the guard of Cecil didn't let him inside due to his appearance. But Mohan was not going to give up so soon. He waited outside the hotel till the hotel manager came out. As soon as the manager came out, Mohan went up to him confidently and said, I am looking for a job, sir. Do you have a vacancy at the Cecil? The manger was deeply impressed by Mohan's English. The very next day, he got a job in Cecil Hotel as a clerk with 50 rupees per month salary. Mohan's main responsibility in Cecil was to manage coal supply and stock. Soon an idea occurred to him that a lot of hotel's money can be saved by using coal dust bowls. Not only these bowls are cheap, but they can also keep boilers working whole night due to their slow burning characteristic. And water can be heated quickly in the morning just by adding some normal coal. He implemented this idea and the hotel made a huge profit. Besides this, Mohan also knew typing and shorthand writing. Soon he started assisting the manager in documentation and letter writing. Seeing all this, the manager promoted him to guest clerk and increased his salary too. In Cecil Hotel, usually only VIP guests used to come. Mohan used to observe the behavior and preferences of these guests deeply. Along with this, he had taken many other responsibilities, such as the responsibility of a cashier. This gave him a chance to interact with the guests personally. Due to all this, by 1925, not only he had become an expert in dealing with the VIP guests, but he had also developed a deep understanding of all the operations of a hotel. Meanwhile, Cecil's manager decided to purchase his own hotel. He bought Carlton Hotel in Shimla itself having 50 rooms. He knew that Mohan had developed an exceptional understanding of the hotel industry. Hence, he offered Mohan to join Carlton Hotel, but not as a clerk, but as a partner. Mohan was now to receive a small portion of Carlton Hotel's profits. On becoming the partner, the whole responsibility of the hotel had fallen on Mohan. As soon as this happened, he completely transformed Carlton Hotel. He immediately renovated the hotel, specially upgrading the bar, attracting young government employees. He personally connected with the British officers, inviting them to his new hotel and offering personalized services. Then the manager Clark's wife fell seriously ill and Clark's decided to return to England after selling the hotel in 20,000 rupees. Mohan was very disappointed. 
The future of the hotel was uncertain in spite of such hard work, and he didn't have money to purchase it himself. Seeing the situation, Ishran sold her entire jewelry, but they still couldn't collect sufficient amount of money. To arrange the remaining amount, Mohan took a loan on high interest rate from a money lender in his village. The risk was very high, but he was confident that he would repay the loan by earning profits. At the age of 34, Mohan Singh Oberoi had become the owner of Carlton Hotel. But along with this, he had a huge debt on him. Ultimately, within two years itself, he repaid the entire loan amount by running the hotel successfully. And his wife became very happy. But now Mohan didn't want to be limited just to a 50-room hotel in his life. Now he wanted to build a whole empire of the hotel business. During this, he came to know that a hotel is available at least in Calcutta, and this hotel was the Grand Hotel. With 500 rooms, Grand Hotel was the one of the biggest and most prestigious hotels not only of Calcutta, but entire India. This was one of Calcutta's very first buildings with a hydraulic lift and had hosted royal family celebrities and dignitaries for many years. But recently, due to contaminated water, there had been a typhoid outbreak here that claimed the lives of six people. After this incident, the hotel's reputation was reduced to dust. That's why in 1937, this hotel ultimately closed down and its owners wanted to give it on lease. Now Mohan had two options in front of him. Either keep running his small hotel in Shimla without any risk or try his luck by taking a hotel on lease that is 10 times bigger than Carlton Hotel. Mohan chose the second option and took the Grand Hotel on lease at the rate of 8,000 rupees per month. But when he inspected the hotel's condition properly, he started to doubt his decision. Every wall inside the building was covered with a thick layer of dust. The paint had peeled off and the interiors were badly damaged. The hotel needed a magical transformation in order to revive it. So, Mohan took a loan once again and executed a massive cleanup operation without delay in which the hotel's each and every corner was deeply cleaned. Interiors such as small trees, gilt mirrors, marble pillars and chandeliers were restored. Finally, he personally reached out to the hotel's old staff such as chef's housekeeping staff and made them join the hotel again because these were the people who knew the hotel the best. But one thing was still to be restored which was the hotel's reputation, which was damaged due to typhoid outbreak. Mohan decided to totally uproot the problem. He removed each and every pipe and overhead tank installed in the hotel and installed a new modern plumbing system. Also, he established a new practice in which he himself inspected the hygiene of his entire staff early in the morning, such as nails, hair, and uniform. Eventually, thus the occupancy in Grand Hotel started increasing within next two years. But as the situation started to get better, another setback presented itself, World War II. With the beginning of the war, Calcutta had become a base for thousands of soldiers of the army, and British needed a lot of space in order to accommodate these soldiers. So in addition to many other buildings, the British passed orders to take Grand Hotel in their possession during the war. Mohan had lost this hotel after so much hard work and investment. He could have become bankrupt due to non-payment of his loans. So he took courage and convinced the British general that if army managed the accommodation and food of the soldiers on its own, the army would have to spend 12 rupees per soldier every day. But Mohan could manage everything at the price of 10 rupees per soldier, which could save the army a lot of money. In order to maximize the occupancy beds, were put up wherever possible. Even corridors and courtyards were converted into dormitories. Ultimately, Grand Hotel with a capacity of 1,400 people started accommodating 4,000 soldiers, which meant a revenue of 40,000 rupees per day. Going by all these strategies, by the end of 1945, Mohan had earned crores of rupees. And now Grand Hotel had opened for normal customers once more. After the grand success of Grand Hotel, Mohan had a new goal even bigger than before. Entire India. He wanted to own a hotel chain in India. So he owned eight most luxurious hotels of India, including Cecil Hotel of Shimla. Mohan started buying the shares of hotels associated strategically from time to time using his profits and eventually he acquired controlling stake. Mohan had now become owner of the eight most luxurious hotels in India including Cecil Hotel. The same Cecil Hotel, where he was denied entry. There was only one aim in Mohan's mind. To make his ten hotels even better than international level luxury hotels. 
and to achieve this he had an amazing master plan. In 1952, he planned a world tour in which his aim was to go to world's topmost hotels and study them deeply. In this tour, he stayed in top hotels like Dorchester Hotel of London, George V Hotel of Paris, and Hilton Hotel of Puerto Rico. He used to carry a notebook and pen while staying in each hotel and took detailed notes on each hotel's layout and operations. After studying 25 hotels in three months, he had collected notes worth hundreds of pages. On returning to India, he made major improvements in everything such as kitchen layout, room design, public area design, menu design and room service of his hotels on the basis of his learnings and achieved international level standards. In 1955, Mohan observed that there are many such historical places in India where kings and emperors once resided but nobody resides there today. He saw a great opportunity here, so he decided to take these palaces on lease by negotiating with the royal families. First of all, he converted the Gulab Vaban Palace into a hotel which belonged to the king of Kashmir, Hori Singh, and thus India got its first real palace hotel. Looking at his continued success by 1970, the Oberoi group started to feel that they had become undisputed king of Indian luxury hotel industry. But then a group enters into the story that emerged as the biggest challenge for the Oberoi group, and this group was the Taj Hotel Group. Till 1971, Taj had only one hotel, their Taj Palace Hotel in Mumbai. But then they opened their first hotel outside Mumbai for the first time. They converted Lake Palace of Udaipa into a hotel. Then they converted Rambag Palace into a hotel in Jaipur. In 1976, they entered Delhi by purchasing a hotel and named it Taj Hotel. In this way, by 1980s, Taj Group had opened its hotels in almost every prominent city of India. Oberoi knew that if they have to really pose a challenge to Taj Group, they will have to open their hotel in that city where Taj had its flagship hotel, which means India's financial capital, Mumbai. In 1970s, Mohan decided that he would build a hotel from scratch in Mumbai. This hotel was to have 500 rooms and with 34 floors. It was to be one of the tallest buildings in Mumbai in those times. The total budget of the project was 7 crores, but with time the cost of the hotel reached up to 20 crores. Oberoi Group had taken a loan for this project and there came a time when the interest payments of just one day had reached up to 1 lakh 20,000. Due to such a huge financial pressure, the finances of entire Oberoi Group began to get affected and it seemed that the construction would have to be stopped. But then at the age of 72, Mohan himself stayed in Mumbai for six months and ensured that the hotel gets completed on time. The hotel got operational in 1973 and things started to get normal for Oberoi Group. But then Oberoi sustained another blow. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi announced emergency in India in 1975 which caused an economic downturn in the country and there was a drop in foreign and domestic travelers. This impacted hotel industry the most. The debt of Oberoi Group increased to such an extent that they faced a pressure to even sell off their hotel in Mumbai. During this time, he noticed that a civil war has begun in Lebanon, due to which many high net worth individuals of Arab countries who used to visit Lebanon for business or leisure began to come to Mumbai instead. Mohan recognized this opportunity and prepared a master plan. He made 200 of his hotel staff learn Arabic by giving them a crash course so that they could communicate with the Arab guests effectively. He printed hotel documents such as room service directory and menu cards into Arabic scripts. He modified the whole food menu and added Arab dishes to it. Due to these strategies, Oberoi Hotel became the first choice hotel for the Arab guests. And in a few years, Oberoi not only paid off his loan, but also generated huge profits from this hotel. With this success, Oberoi Group had established itself as India's most prominent luxury hotel chain. And Mohan Singh Oberoi had successfully dealt with the biggest challenge of his life. He said that we should never accept anything that is second best. And with the same philosophy he built Oberoi Group. Today with its 32 luxury hotels Oberoi is not only one of India's but world's finest hotel chains. And the most important thing is that behind building this business empire worth thousands of crores is a man who himself used to be a hotel clerk once.